2020 Washington archery whitetail season. This is a home state hunt. Let's take a minute to just talk about Eastern Washington for a second. It is actually a sleeper spot for big mature whitetail deer. The spoiler alert though, is that it's incredibly hard to hunt. It's hard to hunt because our public access is very limited and your opportunities are just few and far between on the public lands. There's a lot of private land that could be productive, but then you have to secure permissions, manage those relationships. And typically I'm a public land hunter. 95% of what I do is chasing animals on public land. But I got a gift in the form of a permission that came late in the season this year. If I'm being 100% honest, 2020, I did not prepare for whitetail the way I should have. I was thinking about elk. I was thinking about mule deer. I was thinking about turkeys. I was thinking about bears. And it's just kind of at the end of season. After I got back from our South Dakota hunt, which is in November, I asked a friend and a client of mine if I could hunt his land. He and I had been close in the past, but I just, I honestly never had the balls to ask. And I finally came out and said, hey dude, can I hunt in your land this year? It's close to home for me within a mile and a half of my front door. And fortunately he said, yeah, try it out. See what you think and uh, let's take it from there. So I got to work in and hung some trail cameras. Fortunately, I was blessed with a high density of bucks. There were a couple mature bucks that showed up on camera that I was so excited to chase and a few smaller bucks that frankly, I would have been happy to punch my tag on. So let's just talk about this hunt. It's at the end of my year. I spent probably five to 10 days chasing turkeys, punched three tags on turkeys, and then I just started getting my butt whooped. Honestly, I spent probably 15 days hunting bears. And on the final day of season, I connected with a shot on a bear that I did not recover. That was painful. That momentum early in the season is just hard to deal with. But I moved on to elk season. Elk season, I was hoping to get an Idaho tag and just through some faulty logistics on my end, I didn't get an Idaho tag and had to go hunt Eastern Oregon. Trying to learn Eastern Oregon on the fly, figure it out. Elk densities are low. Spent 20 days hunting elk, did not punch a tag. Fast forward mule deer in South Dakota. Spent seven days in South Dakota chasing deer, got stocks in, got close, was willing to shoot a doe those last couple days and did not punch a tag. So in 2020, I had logged over like 45 days of hunting with a couple turkey tags punched in the spring. I was hoping my luck was gonna change for this whitetail hunt. Now the last couple of years, I've ran trail cameras during the rut and I've gotten to see how bucks act in Washington. In the last 10 days of November, give or take a couple days, these bucks really start rutting. And what I had observed in the past is these big bucks get up midday and they cruise, they move midday, and they're not sitting around idle waiting for does to come to them. This year I was committed that when I sat, I wanted to sit the whole day if I could and take advantage of that midday window. Our season opens November 25th. So really we're getting those last five days and that's our window for rut behavior. And then we kind of get a second window later where bucks are trying to feed, but I wanted to try to get it done early. As I rolled into November 25th, the first day of our late season archery hunt in our area, I was excited. There were a couple mature bucks on camera and a couple other bucks that I knew if they came in front of me, they were gonna be hard to pass. I was able to finagle my schedule in a way where I could hunt the afternoon, got in the stand, and I sure enough had a big buck right in front of me. Out of short notice, I was hunting out of a ground blind and I probably should have been in the tree. And that first encounter really taught me that I needed to position myself better to be more ready to draw my bow and more ready to execute on a shot when that deer came in. Because that deer, as soon as I went to draw my bow, he was he was out. And there goes one opportunity on a mature buck and we just we really shouldn't squander those opportunities. Next day, I'm in the stand midday. Again, I had a big buck cruise through midday. He just did not give me much of a chance. He showed up, moved through. And as I was trying to position myself for a shot, he got funny and moved on. And fast forward to day three, Thanksgiving 2020. I've always heard other people tell stories of things coming together on a holiday like Thanksgiving. And all I could think and hope for that day was that I would have an opportunity. I was gonna sit from dusk till dawn 
and I was going to give it hell and wait out a deer. About in the middle of the day, I got out of my mini chair. I was sitting on my knees, kind of giving myself a break, eating a snack. And I looked in behind the bait coming up this little finger draw was a buck coming. This was the perfect opportunity because I was already on my knees, the position I was going to shoot from. And all I had to do was grab my bow, knock an arrow and get ready for the shot. This deer wandered up that finger and, and made his way over into the bait. As he put his head down and I was positioning myself ready for a shot, you can see he got alerted. I drew my bow. I settled my pin behind his front shoulder and I made what I thought was a great shot. I saw the arrow blow through the back of him, sent the footage to Dan actually, and Dan said, you know, you might not find a ton of blood, but that deer is, that deer is passed. Thanksgiving, baby. Let's go. Yes. And all I could think was how incredibly grateful I was on Thanksgiving day that I had just punched my 2020 Washington whitetail tag. I gave it like 90 minutes, started tracking this deer and it was not a long trail. I was probably hundred yards from the shot, the followed the blood right to the deer. It blew through the deer and hit the tree. Basically <laughs> kind of wrecked this thing. This was over 45 days of hunting. And there's this misconception from the non-hunting community about how much effort really goes in to harvesting big game. And I can say with full confidence that in 2020, I put in over 45 days of hunting, logged, must be hundreds of miles in my boots. And on the final hunt of the year, I was able to get it done. That's a wrap on my 2020 hunting season. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys dig this content, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hang with us because 2021 is gonna be special.